Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by MMA veteran Ricardo Funch. Ricardo, how are you? I'm doing well, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. Ricardo, you got a fight coming up April 25th at CES MMA 22. Before we start talking about that fight, it's been a while since we've seen you in action. It's been 22 months since the last time we've seen you fight. What's caused this long layoff? Where have you been, and why haven't we seen you in action? Uh, in August of 2012, I had a motorcycle accident, and uh, and uh, I got hurt pretty bad, but I, I didn't realize my wrist was broken. I didn't find out until January of the following year, and uh, I ended up doing a surgery and put a pin in my wrist in March. And uh, and pretty much since then, just to be like healing little by little, my hand just pretty much is comfortable where I can punch and start training again. And uh, that's pretty, been pretty much it. And also because I've been busy with work, you know, as I think a lot of people know that that I, I work for the local police. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and my hours are, are, are difficult hours to train and everything because I, I do the third shift. So just like one thing after the other, and, and I just finally got a got a chance to fight, get in shape again, and that that's that's been the reason why. Mm-hmm. And just a correction, though, uh, I won't be fighting April twenty fifth because my opponent got hurt and it got pushed back to June twenty seventh. Oh, same event, same opponent, same everything, just a different day. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Th- thanks for the heads up, but um, anyways. Yeah. So when exactly were you 100% cleared for a fight? You know, you mentioned that you uh, had this, in, or you got into this motorcycle accident, and then you, you slowly but surely were able to get uh, healthier and healthier. When exactly were you starting to search for fights? Uh, the doctor cleared me to, to fight, to, to start training in September of last year. But uh, I, I had a knee uh, a injury on my knee, so there, uh, I, I was out of training for another two months after that, and then uh, this, and then I went to Brazil in January to visit my family. I usually travel every January, spend like about a month with my family. So I wasn't really training. So once I got back, once I got back, I think it was May. Uh, I'm sorry, February 18th. Uh, I started looking for fights. Uh, I started training again. Got into my uh, regular regimen. And I, I was looking for a fight, like, any time between April or June. That's what I was looking for, because I figured that from May, from February to then I, I, was, I was going to be able to get in shape again. Mm-hmm. So pretty much in February, I started looking for fights. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now, your last two fights were for the UFC. They were not fights that went your way they're they're you know those fights are fights that i'm sure uh, you're hoping you know turned out differently but uh, your last two fights were both losses during this streak of injuries that you've had and, and the off time was there ever um any doubts that crept into your mind about coming back to mma was there any doubts that you had about you know maybe i might not be healthy again obviously you're someone who can earn a living outside the sport you work as a police officer and and make money that way, so you don't need uh, to fight to to earn money. But um, was there ever uh, any any doubts in your mind? You know, I might not be back, considering that you know I'm on a losing streak. I'm not very healthy. Was there ever a time where you doubted that you'd make a return? Uh, that wasn't really a doubt. It was just more my motivation. I think I was pretty disappointed, uh, especially the fight that hurt me the most was uh, my Mike Pyle fight. Mm-hmm. That right. fight, uh, I really performed, like, really bad. Right. I wasn't really ha- happy at all with the performance. That's still, like, I think my, the worst loss of my career. But uh, I, I got over that. Uh, when I fought Jim Miller, I was very good mentally and physically. I think the best that I had ever been for a UFC fight, at least. But I unfortunately, didn't go my way. I felt that I won the, the, the first two rounds. And uh, once once I got the knockdown, he, he had a knockdown on me. Uh, I kind of got desperate and, 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 and was trying very hard to, to take him down and finish the fight because I, I figured that with, with the knockdown, the judge would give it to him. So I figured, oh, man, if I lose by points or lose by a knockout or whatever, it's still a loss. I might as well just try to do everything I can. Mm-hmm. And that one didn't end up going my way, as you know. As, as, as you know. But uh, no, it wasn't really... Uh, I didn't really... 
I never thought that I wasn't able to compete anymore. You were just like really unmotivated. Like those thoughts really got into me. And then after having the, 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 the accident and the injuries after the injuries, uh, it just messed up with my motivation. But uh, physically I always felt that uh, I could heal anything that was happening to me. It was just a matter of like being mentally ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this time off was actually good. It re-energized me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to get back into it. It's been a long time and I really miss it. Mm -hmm. I really do it for fun, you know, I have fun doing it, of course, I, I, I wish, you know, I did better and, and was making a living just from fighting, but uh, it's not the case right now, but I still have a lot of fun, I feel very motivated to train now, I just miss it, I can't wait to get back in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now you mentioned that your motivation was, was uh, low because of the results of some of those fights, but since you've been out of the cage for so long and you had these injuries, was it possibly a, you know, in a, in a strange way, was it possibly a blessing in disguise that you had these injuries to re-motivate yourself and to re-energize yourself to come back to the sport? Was it maybe a good thing that you were away from the sport for a while? Yeah, definitely, because it made me very impatient. I mean, it made me miss it, you know? Mm -hmm. I uh, made me miss it very much, get back in there, get, get into the routine of training again, and, and doing the things that I like. So it definitely helped me because it made me miss it very much. And, uh, and like I said, it's been very long, and and and, and now I really want to get back in there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the layoff was actually a good thing, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Now, you had two UFC stints. Your first UFC stint, you had a two-fight uh, stint. It was against Johnny Hendricks and Claude Patrick. Those were the first two fighters that you fought in the first run that you had with the UFC. Um, just curious, what went wrong for you during that time? Obviously, Johnny Hendricks, he's the champion right now. No shame in that loss. And then Claude Patrick is a very talented fighter as well. So uh, you fought great guys in the UFC, but um, what exactly went wrong for you there? Because I, I think you only had like seven fights uh, going into the Johnny Hendricks fight. Was it maybe, you know, at that time, maybe fighting for the UFC was a little bit too soon for you? Uh, no, I, I don't think skill-wise it was too soon for me. I think it was more of a matter of mentally, psychologically being ready for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I started train my training like, I, I literally had done nothing in my life until I was about 25 years old. I started training jiu-jitsu, I started training everything at that age. And I got into the FC four years later when I was 29. It was just a matter of being mentally prepared. I, you know, the UFC is definitely like a whole new level of, of pressure and everything else. And I think that's what, uh, that, that's what my problem was, was mentally I wasn't ready for the big show, I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, even... Even even after uh, after those two fights, because I knew I, I came from losses, I went into my third and my fourth fight also with, with that in my mind. I said, "Oh man, I, I gotta really put a good show here because mm -hmm. I'm, 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 you know, I'm walking on the same line here." And, and that that didn't help it either. You know, that didn't make me feel comfortable and lose enough inside the cage. I was always with that in the back of my mind, like, "Man, if I lose again, that's gonna be the end of it. They're gonna kick me out." So I was never I was never able to feel comfortable in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always had the pressure, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the second stint? You really oh, go ahead. Hurt me, huh? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I thought you were finished. Go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah, I, I finished. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I think I think I was never losing. I was always on some sort of pressure, mm -hmm. and, and, and I and, and I never got to, to really flow in, in, in the cage inside the UFC. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the second stint you had when you fought against Mike Pyle and Dan Miller? Um, was that maybe too soon? Because after you were released after the Claude Patrick and Johnny Hendricks fights, uh, you had one fight outside the UFC, and then you were back um, a very short time after um, the Ryan Quinn fight. You, you fought Mike Pyle in Brazil. Um, was that too soon? Was it too soon for you to, to come back to the UFC? Were you still feeling uh, the same things that you were feeling the first stint in the UFC you know, carrying over? Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was. It was soon because uh, what happened was I, I had the, 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 the Ryan Queen fight and then uh, uh, the UFC Brazil was scheduled to happen and I, I think somebody got hurt. I think it was... Uh, Paul Thiago. Paul Thiago, he got yeah. hurt. So they called me three weeks. Uh, 
before the fight to fill in for 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 him. That's why I, I, I got back into it because they needed somebody. Mm -hmm. I just I just came from a win. I had a visa, you know, I had a Brazilian passport, so they figured it would be like easy to get me mm -hmm. uh, with this short time because I, I would have the papers all set to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and uh, yeah, so so that that was very soon. That was just like a short notice fight for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that turned out to be like my worst fight. Right. And then again, once I, and then for the end of the fight, there was actually no excuse. I was I was really feeling good in the fight. I had done the best training camp ever. Uh, physically, was very loose. I was, I was feeling good. I for, for I did my I did my best fight against the Mira, but uh, you just you know once again you frustrated me. The elusive, you were feeling just just usually through my fingers. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Now, going into the Mike Pyle fight, were you feeling pressure to say yes to the fight? You know, were you feeling pressure to accept that one? Because, you know, here you are, 0-2 uh, in the UFC, and, you know, if they call, you you know, if, if Joe Silva or, or someone from the UFC calls you and says, hey, you want to fight, you kind of have to take it because you never know when you're going to get an opportunity to I, fight. If, were you feeling pressure to do it? those guys, you know you're never going to get called back. And also, I took my chance, and I said, of course, I'll be, mm -hmm. I'll be there. I'll be there the next day. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I wouldn't say no to them just because you know if, if you leave them hanging, then you're never gonna be back to their show. So mm -hmm. uh, I took the fight, I took my risk, and and you no, know, I wasn't I wasn't lucky enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're undefeated outside the UFC. Your only losses have come inside the octagon. What is it about the UFC that's so different from any of the other places? Because you're not the only guy out there uh, throughout the history of the UFC to perform very well outside of it. But when you get into it, you you haven't you haven't picked up a win. There's a lot of guys out there who who are you know have great records, but are oh and whatever in the UFC. What is it about the UFC? Is it the bright lights? Is it the pressure? Is it the competition? What is it about where guys who who outside the UFC are performing great, but inside haven't been able to pick up wins? It is definitely the whole aspect of it. It, it is a skill level. You know, those guys, the UFC definitely has the best, uh, I'm pretty sure, payroll of any organization, has the best athletes. And also, they they, they have they have a great show, man. You know, they, the, the production is excellent. The exposure is excellent. So it's, it's, it's a lot of things on you. It's a lot of cameras on you. It's a lot of lights. You know, it's a lot of people yelling. It, it is a whole new level of pressure for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and some people, uh, I wasn't able to find my my rhythm inside mm -hmm. of, of the UFC uh, due to those those things. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think that skill wise, uh, I I I I could compete with, with most of those guys in there. It's just a matter of like being mentally mentally. I was I wasn't I wasn't as complete I was uh, as I was physically. Mm -hmm. Now, you were thrown to the wolves right away. I mean, all the guys that you fought in the UFC are, are killers. They're all great fighters. Um, not that there's any easy fights in the UFC, but would you have liked to have fought someone who was close and experienced with you? Because, you know, Mike Pyle has a ton of fights. Dan Noer has a ton of fights. Would, would you have liked to have fought someone who had a similar record, similar experience to you? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think if I had got one win... Previous to fighting those guys, I wouldn't mind fighting them. But I think if I had one win, so I could say, "Oh man, I got my win inside the UFC," like you know, it would put me in a whole new state of mind. And 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 I think the new state of mind, not that my skills level would improve m much more than the, which already was, but uh, I think with my state of mind would have been different. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had at least one win or, under my belt, if I fought somebody. With close experience, as much as experience as me, I, I think uh, uh, if I if I had in the beginning taken uh, a different fight, I think uh, uh, my my whole uh, course in, in the UFC would have, would have been different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we would definitely make wonders for me there. As psychologically, would, would 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 be would be a good thing for me to to have got one win there. Mm -hmm. Now, payment-wise, because I remember when you signed with the UFC, you signed a four-fight deal with them. Uh, for that Mike Pyle fight, was that on the original contract? Like, they just kind of carried it over? I mean, you had been cut from the UFC, but when you came back, was it just kind of, okay, um, since you had a four-fight deal, let's just pick up where we left off? Uh, do you remember what the no, contract no, was? No, it was, was, was a different contract. Okay. 
Yeah, because after my second fight, we had ended our, our, our contract. And then for that fight, we signed like a whole different contract. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Now, how much does it bother you that because there's a lot of fans out there who only watch the UFC or um, they they watch the UFC and maybe the other big shows out there, the Bellators, the World Series, but uh, not really many of the regional shows. They just kind of stick to the ones that are on TV. Um, how much does it bother you that the only thing fans have to go off of you is your UFC run where, where you weren't able to pick up a win and, and were um, not at your best, you know, weren't, weren't looking like the guy that we saw outside the octagon. Um, does that bother you when, when people only go off of what they saw in the UFC? Uh, no, really, I didn't even think about that. Uh, most of the people that I deal with, anyways, they are from the New England area where people know me mm-hmm. from the outside of the UFC, anyways. Like, I, I don't get approached by too many people that is not from this area. I mean, maybe a few here and there through Facebook or something. But they always are very supportive. I haven't met anybody that was that was like nasty to me or anything, saying bad things. Oh, you suck, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Everybody that approached me, they were very nice. But like I said, most of the people that I deal with, anyways, are people, of course, from my from where I'm from here, from the Western Mass, New England area. And people know me. The, uh, people know me around here. Who, who follows me? Main the local scene knows who I am, and no, no, no more of me than just the UFC. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Now I'm curious, what's harder, fighting in a cage or fighting crime in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think on the streets uh, it's definitely harder because uh, not, not, not physically harder but mentally harder because you have to worry about so many things, you know, the escalation of the situation. You know, when because the situation can go from very friendly to like a shootout in a matter of a few seconds. You know, also how you approach people, how you talk to them, how 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 you talk them down from doing something. You know, how you talk them out of doing something. Uh, so psychologically, it, it is more demanding, I think. In the in the cage, you know, you pretty much, you know, you can fight like by. Autopilot sometimes, you get hit, you don't even know where you are, and you still fight. You know, people don't even realize that sometimes that some people, they get hit, they kind of out out of it, but people don't realize because people are just in autopilot, you know, they keep fighting. And on the streets, like when you're doing the job, you can definitely not be in autopilot. Your, your mind has to be sharp at all times. You have to be very aware of what's going on. And, and I think mentally it's definitely more demanding out on the streets. Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of action do you see on the mean streets of Ludwig, Mass? What what kind of action? Any stories? Uh, Ludwig is a very quiet town, to tell you the truth. Right. <laughs> it's a small town, about 22,000 people. Um, we get our share of... of I, I think the most uh, dangerous thing from a, for a cop nowadays, I think it is uh, domestics. Mm-hmm. Um those those lately they have been killing a lot of cops on domestic situations but uh, hey, well, we don't get we don't get too many yeah, it happens of course like everywhere else but uh it's, you know it's, it's a small town you know it has right. its days that are very busy some days you know you go by not a call you know, it all varies from day to day right right how long have you been a police officer uh i got hired through the town on March 7th of 2011, and then I did academy for six months, and then I was out on the street, I'm sorry, five months, and then I put the uniform for the first time on July 28th of 2011, so it'll be three years, almost three years. Mm -hmm. Now, if I understand correctly, if I understand the story, um, you work with a lot of police officers. You know, you teach some of them jujitsu, correct? And that's how you, someone, one of your students, encouraged you to to do that. Is is yes. that the story? Yeah, a state trooper, a state trooper out of Springfield. He uh, he was a student of ours. He was a purple belt. Uh, I, I was teaching class, the adult class in the morning, and he was one of my students. 
And uh, <laughs> at that time, I was ju I was just teaching and, and living from teaching money and from fighting here and there. I had got like uh, injuries, like one after the other. So we felt fighting for the longest time, and pretty much all my money was just coming from teaching, which wasn't much. So the guys, oh man, you always broke. Why don't you apply for for for? Uh, uh, why don't you take the civil service? You know, mm -hmm. you live in a Portuguese town. You speak Portuguese. You know, you know, self defense would be a great addition to 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 the police here. I was like, ah man, what the hell? I'll try. You know, I'll try it. So I just went after he suggested. Um, he gave me a link and everything for the website where the, the test would be held and everything. So I went. They took the test in 2009, April of 2009, and then like a year and a half went by without them saying anything if I passed or not. And then I got a little notice on the mail saying, hey, if you're interested in the job, show up for an interview. So a week later I went, and boom, that was it. They hired me. Mm -hmm. So but every, everything ha happened very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And on a, on a unexpectedly yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now what about your hair because I remember when you fought Mike Pyle you had this uh, dreadlock I don't know what they called braids dreadlocks whatever they were called at the time did they make you cut those because you started being a police no, officer when I fought Mike Pyle that was the first time that I didn't have it oh uh, okay yeah, I had it my two previous fights in the okay. UFC. Yeah, yeah, that okay. They were okay. just like braids. Yeah. yeah, they were just like my war, my war face. But I couldn't, I couldn't have it for the Mike Pyle. From the Mike Pyle fight on, I couldn't have it because uh, you know they, they require your hair to be like a certain length, and and, and the length that uh, that we have it here is not long enough to braid it. Uh, oh. So from now on, my hair is just gonna be normal. I'm not gonna be able to 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 have it like it was. Oh, I see. I see. And now, when, when what exactly is your role um, on the force? You know, are you are you out on the streets? Are you are you in the office? Are you working the the, the prison, the jail, whatever whatever you want to call it? You know, what what I'm exactly a, is your duty? I'm a patrol man. I'm out oh. on the streets. Oh, uh, I drive solo. I drive my own my own car and everything. Oh, oh, I see, I see. And now, um, how many? tickets have you given out you know there's got to be some stories you can, there's got to be some stories you can tell us about you know somebody trying to get out of a ticket like come on give us something <laughs> yeah, did you tickets. did you ever pepper did you ever pepper spray anyone did you ever use the nightstick on anyone did you ever choke somebody out you know give us something here uh, like i said Lowell is a very small town right up right. to this point thank god i never had i never had to use it my guy i only drew it one time because this guy was having a. Uh, uh, a fight with his wife, and uh, I think his wife was having an affair or something, and he, he doused himself on gasoline and, and, and lit himself on fire. I was the first on the scene, and uh, like I didn't know what was going on because he just heard the call, like the call was very confused how, as he came into the dispatch. So I just got there, I just knew somebody had lit themselves on fire, I didn't know who it was or what was going on. So I arrived on the scene, like everybody surrounding this guy and kind of running away from him. Like I only, I, I, I don't know what was going on. I think he was holding like something black on his hand. I think it was like the nozzle from the from the container that he had used on himself. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it was a gun. So I pulled my gun. I pulled my flashlight and my gun, and I told him you now to get on the ground. And then, and then once I got close to him, I could see that like he had no skin, he was smoking, you know, like, oh man, you know, the guy, that was the guy, mm -hmm. so he, he got on, on his knees, and then uh, I, I didn't have to use my gun, of course, so I just was like, I had like a hose up to him, so I was just like keeping him wet until the ambulance got there, so I only drew my gun once, and uh, I only like wrestled somebody to the ground, I think a couple of times, but I never had to use like uh, a stick. Mm. But nothing. I never pepper sprayed nobody. I never punched nobody. Thank God. So so far, I'm, I, I've been able to 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 keep my my um, my uh, my career very clean. No 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 excess of force or anything like that. Nothing was needed so far. Mm. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. And now, um, if you ever could arrest someone in MMA that, that that fights right now, who would it be? You know, who's who's someone that you you would tap go to the ground, uh, you know, lock up the handcuffs and throw them in the back of the car, you know, is there someone in MMA, some fighter in MMA that you'd love to arrest? That I'd love to arrest? Yeah. No, I, I, 
I don't really, I, I don't really have anybody that I just like. It, you know? okay. I think everybody does their own thing just because they 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 see, figure whatever they, they can do to draw attention to themselves is what they're gonna do. I don't, I don't, I'm not against what they do. The only, the only, like I said, the only fight that I don't like that that I really hold like a lot of. Uh, like a lot of bad feelings about what my Mike Pyle fight. Not because like I don't like the guy, it's just like, how mm -hmm. from the fight, how the fight ended. Especially because of the first time I had like a family member like coming to my fight. And and the way the fight went, that fight really is stuck in my head. And and, and, and if there is somebody that I would like to fight, like a, even if he's on the street, it would be Mike Pyle. Like I said, nothing against him, just because I wanna, I wanna I want to face him again and, and just fight my fight and, and, and really show my skills against him. Mm -hmm. And that's the only fight that uh, that uh, really like bothers me. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing against him, like I said, it's just a war against my performance. I wish I would have another chance against him. Like, who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe sometime some in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if Mike Pyle's listening, uh, Mike, don't ever go to Ludwell, Massachusetts. Uh, there's a warrant out for your arrest, Officer Funch. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I actually I'm like him to come here I'm to cook for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing uh, you. So um, Ricardo, you mentioned that June is where you're going to be fighting for for CSE. You're going to be taking on uh, Brett Otani. You mentioned it was supposed to happen. Sorry. Uh, April 25th, but now it's been pushed back to June. Um, so from now until the fight, are you going to be in a training camp? Are you going to be, you know, doing two, three times a day from now and th until then, or are you going to, you know, maybe a month out? Yeah, I'm so gonna. I, I, you know, I, I can only do twice a day. Okay. Because of, you know, I work overnight. I have to sleep during the day, so mm -hmm. my my time is very restricted. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my my because I was training for this fight when I was coming. I was I was coming very hard. Like uh, I'm not gonna kick the pace right now. I'm gonna take one week vacation to kind of let my body uh, kind of rebuild itself. And the next week I'm gonna start light again. And then I'll, I'll pick it up in two to three weeks back to 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 the intensity uh, I, I I was just like a few days ago. No. Oh. I see, I see. Well, Ricardo, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk. Um, I don't know if you have any sponsors, but if you do, is is there any that you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? No, I, I don't have any sponsors right now. Like I, said, I haven't been fighting for over two, almost more than two years by the time I step on the cage again. Right. I just want to thank my my team, man. My team Link is, is, is my second family. Is my home away from home. Those guys are awesome. Everybody is very, very supportive. And, and and also my my coworkers at the police station. Everybody always, you know, when, when I need time for something, they always are able to donate some of the time to to help me out. So I can get a little break before a fight, a week or so, uh, so I don't have to go to work and all that. So I really want to thank them, my my coworkers and and, and my teammates. Mm -hmm. Ricardo, thank you for the update. I'm glad that you're doing well. I was worried about you. I didn't know where you were. You you've been away from the sport for a very long time, so I'm uh, happy yeah. that you're doing good, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, and, and, and you're going to see like a new version on, on John, believe me. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I can't wait. More, I, a more uh, an orthodox guy. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I look forward to June, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk once again, and uh, thank you. I, I look forward to yeah, seeing you, you in the cage. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And when the